You won't break me. Fifteen years ago, I swallowed everything I needed to escape from a hostage situation. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the most iconic supporting characters on Family Guy. Wasn't it awesome? It was totally awesome! It was the most awesome thing ever! Hug me! Number 20. Jesus. Who knew a deity would be one of the most memorable additions to the series? The Son of God has been a regular fixture since the very beginning. Hang on! Man, you crazy, Jesus! You crazy! That's what my ex-wife said. While he got his start in cutaways, he eventually became part of the storylines. Since then, he's wreaked havoc on the Griffins' lives whenever he visits. His out there personality has made everything he does an absolute riot. Awesome. A chick chick and chick fight. Ha ha ha. While he could have just been a religious caricature, they managed to incorporate both canonical aspects about the figure while also playfully poking at him. It's a fine line to walk, and they continue to knock it out of the park. This is kind of embarrassing, but are you okay with someone who smokes? Oh, yeah. Are, are you okay with someone who wanders the desert lecturing people on how to act? Fans can't wait for the day he rises once more and returns to Quahog. Number 19. Greased Up Deaf Guy Don't let it get the best of you. I used to be a lawyer. See you next week. Family Guy is at its best when it fully leans into its irreverent humor. One of the best examples of this is in their gag characters. Most notably, this guy. Everything about him is seemingly random and the perfect material for a one-time bit. Oh, the grease burns so bad! I can't hear! Boy, I am late for that meeting. However, the writers made the genius decision to have him make semi-regular appearances. He has the ability to turn any scene into a laugh-out-loud moment, no matter what he does. His distinctive look and demeanor have helped him stay fresh in the minds of countless viewers, even if his cameos are more sparse in recent seasons. Whether he's causing playful mischief or addressing the audience, his moments are always executed perfectly. You're never gonna catch me. You're wasting your time. Forget about it. Go do something else. See you next year. Number 18. Al Harrington. If there's one thing this show loves, it's a good shtick. Harrington started as just that an extended quip about ridiculous commercials. Hi, I'm Al Harrington, president and CEO of Al Harrington's wacky waving inflatable arm flailing tube man emporium and warehouse. With his rapid fire speech and his excited demeanor, his ads soon become a favorite amongst those who love the program. His promotions have been a constant joy over the years, even landing a coveted spot in their famed Star Wars parodies. Hi, I'm Darth Harrington of Darth Harrington's Intergalactic Proton Powered Electrical Tentacled Advertising Droids Emporium and Moonbase. He has a natural way of drawing the spotlight to himself, even if he isn't the biggest personality present in the sequence. While his traits could have been seen as one note, they managed to keep him fresh by adding small details about himself and his personal life proving that the writers care about their creations, no matter how prominent they are. I am currently seeking online companionship as a short but handsome, slightly hairy, newly single salesman, and I would love to attempt to convert my heavily embellished internet profile and carefully airbrushed out-of-date photo into a night of physical intimacy with you! Number 17. Angela Peter has had quite a few bosses throughout his career, but none have truly had the same impact that she did. From the beginning, Angela served as a foil to his work shenanigans, keeping him in line in a way nobody else could. Mr. Griffin, although I may not fully understand Opie's management style, he has proven himself a more competent employee than you. So, in my absence, you will listen to him. As the program progressed, so did her characterization. Despite her no-nonsense attitude, she had her fair share of entertaining moments as well, even if they were slightly insulting. Shut up! Everybody, shut up! This took a lot of courage! The fact that she was voiced by the incomparable Carrie Fisher only served to make her more beloved in the eyes of the viewers. She was retired when the actress sadly passed, and she was given a truly genuine send-off. With a bit of a twist, of course. I may have lost a boss, but heaven has gained a princess. And I am at the wrong funeral. Number 16, Principal John Shepard. Well, Mr. Griffin, I don't like it. I 
love it. The best part about Chris and Meg going to the same school is getting more time with him. Principal Shepard has been a constant presence over the years, mostly serving as a vehicle for some plots beginning via meetings with the parents. In recent years, he's been further developed into the sassy administrator he is today. Although the backstory he's been given could have been sad, it's played in the most hysterical way. He's had some of the best one-liners, especially when he's trying to be cool or ruthlessly insulting his students. Later today, you're going to have a big thrill, because shortly after lunch, there'll be a fire drill. And when you go out to wait for the bus, mm, go in orderly fashion or your hair will get mussed. You suck! No, you suck. When he made his debut, nobody could have seen just how hilarious he would become. And now he's one of the cornerstones of the sitcom's modern era. Looking for someone? I like this episode. <laughs> Number 15, Carl. Hey, Brian, you see that magazine cover right there? See who's on it? Yeah, that's Jessica Alba. Yeah, you want to know a secret, buddy? What? I would do her. Really? Oh, yeah. I just wanted you to know a little bit about who I am. While a guy who works at a gas station is obsessed with movies may not seem like the funniest inclusion, he's proven you don't have to be completely insane to make an impact. While he's quieter, every line is dripping in comedy gold. Well, maybe we should take a look at that letter. Yeah, I'd like to see that, because I can read it just like everybody else. And the charade continues. His seemingly endless wealth of mature movie moments instantly cemented his fan-favorite status, and further revelations about him only made him more beloved. His rapport with Chris was natural, and it never felt like he was being forced into scenes. His voice actor, being H. John Benjamin, has been opened up to even more jokes, particularly meta ones about his other roles. Here's that guy Bob from Bob's Burgers. Hi, I'm Bob from Bob's Burgers. How about that show Archer? You watch that show Archer? He's been criminally underused in more recent years, although when he does appear, he's always a delight. Number 14, Seamus. If it's gale force peeing you be doing, it could mean you've got barnacles on your prostate. He's probably the most unexpectedly funny addition to the show. In the earlier seasons, Seamus was purely a salty old sea dog, warning Peter of the dangers of his fishing job. However, over the years, he's mellowed out and become more complex. Allow me to introduce you to my son, Woody. Hey, Woody. Hey, he's going to be a new character on the show. You're barely a character on the show. More than Woody! His constant need for validation from the gang has been a constant source of hilarity, whether he's workshopping puns or trying to join in on their adventures. His body being completely made of wood has led to some impeccable comedic moments as well, without ever punching down or driving them into the ground. Who's in? No, 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 not, not, not you, Seamus. Ah, poo. While he's playfully roasted by many of the town's residents, there's no doubt he's become so much more than the gag he once was. Number 13, John Herbert. Oh, hey there, young fella. Bringing me good news today? Family Guy is not exactly known for being politically correct, and our dear neighbor Herbert the Pervert exemplifies this. Both Herbert and his quote-unquote dog have one foot in the grave, and every third word he speaks has an obnoxious ring to it. Nonetheless, the neighborhood children are his livelihood, and not in a good way. You know, if you get sweaty and want to take your shirt off, that'd be just fine. Or well, tie it in a knot, your choice. Chris Griffin is a favorite of his, and for the most part, he remains painfully oblivious to Herbert's sinister motives. It's hard to imagine a scenario where these kinds of criminals are a source of comedy, but Seth MacFarlane has done just that with a character you constantly find yourself unintentionally laughing at. Number 12, Tomek and Belgar. Oh, you said it, friend. But I wanted to stay, because I almost had sex on this girl. Oh, yeah, but it was so expensive. Each drink was like $6.40. One of the great aspects of Family Guy is its ability to unearth stereotypes you were never fully aware of. Tomek and Belgard, a.k.a. the two guys that have been living in the United States almost long enough to sound American, are never incorrect with their speech patterns. But they're also never quite good. Much sorry, friend. Man, there are no women's here. We've got to make like 70s rock man Garrett and Leaf. Do they ever have any pertinence to the show's plot? No, they're more of a filler when the runtime needs an additional 30 seconds of padding. 
On some occasions, these extra 30 seconds are the funniest part of the episode, and the gag can be readily repackaged again and again and again. You said it, friend. What do you say for celebration we go dunk our whistles in the trough? Number 11, Trisha Takanawa. Peter, I'm standing here on your front porch hoping to kill that dolphin with this harpoon. Japan! They kill things that we like! Trisha manages to take on two stereotypes for the price of one, as an Asian and a drab news reporter. Diane, I'm standing outside the Park Barrington Hotel because they don't allow Asians inside. Most statements made by her start the same way and are over within three to four seconds. Rarely do they offer any relevant news, but frequently do they create muffled laughter. Trisha's actions aren't necessarily on the nose for either, but there's just something about her that makes us cross our fingers whenever a Quahog news report pops up on the screen. Tom, I'm outside this maximum security facility where a ruthless thug has engineered a daring escape. If you're watching this, Trisha, please know you're always welcome to guest host a Watch Mojo video. Wait, what? Says who? That's my job. Number 10. Ernie the Giant Chicken. Your money's no good here. No, my, my food was more expensive. I feel bad. if I We I, invited I, you. I've got this. Look, just let go of the check, eh? You let go of the check. I'm not taking my hand off this thing. Well, neither am I. Who would have ever thought that he would become anything more than a time filler? Peter has had plenty of enemies over the years, but none have been as persistent as the Giant Chicken. Buddy, I'm sorry. You okay? Their beef goes back to some of the earliest episodes when the foul gave him a faulty coupon. Now every time they see each other, a grand, sprawling battle takes place. They've gone all over the world and have even traveled through time while beating each other up. However, in recent years, Ernie has been given some unexpected developments. You know, even though you and Peter have your differences, I'm glad it hasn't affected our friendship. Us redheads have to stay together, right? <laughs> <laughs> We've been able to learn about his relationship with his family and more about his life, which no one could have expected after seeing that first fight all those years ago. Number 9. Jillian Russell Wilcox I want some more of Jillian's delicious lemonade. I know, it's good, right? I just wish they didn't have to kill so many lemons to make it. Despite being a dog, Brian has no trouble dating a plethora of beautiful women. However, none of his girlfriends left as much of an impression as Jillian did. From the beginning, she stood out due to how exaggerated her lack of intelligence was. The juxtaposition between her personality and his was genuinely interesting, and it was fun watching them play off one another. Wait, wait, I have another question. How do I know if I'm Jewish? Are you Jewish? No. There you go, sport. Thank you. However, she was much more than a pretty face. She was kind-hearted, which always came through in her appearances. Hey, maybe it was that cat who was the murderer. Let me ask him. Meow, meow, meow? Meow, 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 meow? She brought out a great side of the canine, and people were genuinely bummed when the two broke up for good. Since then, none of his girlfriends have had the same spark with him or the fan base. Number 8. Dr. Elmer Hartman We did all we can, but medical science has come just so far. Ah! <gasps> and now I will take off this protective potato head mask. We certainly wouldn't want him as our real-life physician, but we'll still gladly watch him on our TVs. While some characters who become less smart over time can become one note, Dr. Hartman's constantly decaying intelligence has been one of the most amusing bits since the series' inception. Well, chances are Peter never would have survived the surgery. I mean, I mean, dog kidneys? I mean, I'm not even sure dogs have kidneys. <laughs> what? Do dogs have kidneys? Yes. Ah, this, this is the guy. His long-winded bait-and-switch jokes are a stroke of comic genius and established his humor early on. His incompetence knows no bounds, and he has no understanding of the human body whatsoever. Mr. Griffin, you're a lucky man. If it weren't for Chip here, you might have lost your leg. The bad news is we did an x-ray, and your body is full of a spooky skeleton man. Despite being the definition of a personality hire, he's so likable that his malpractice just ends up being funny. While he may not be the best doctor, he's definitely one of the best parts of Family Guy, and that's just as good in our book. <laughs> Number 7. 
Mort Goldman. Oh, they're awful, those Nazis. If they catch me, they'll beat me unmerciful and rub dirt in my ass neck and all over my assy nipples. The character of Mort Goldman essentially beats you over the head with the countless Jewish stereotypes presented every time he appears on screen. Jewish last name? Check. Timid uncertainty of Woody Allen proportions? Check. Local business owner with tedious attention to detail of all things related to money? Double check. Buy one, get one free. Huh? Buy one. Yeah, I get that. Get one free. Is that like a Spanish word? The comedy envelope is constantly pushed with each gag involving Mort's. For every one that doesn't land, there are ten more that leave you laughing uproariously due to its irreverent humor. I'm trying to overcome my fear of swords because a man in a pirate suit stabbed me in the ear when I was five and then again when I was thirty. Number six. Carter Pewter Schmitz. Oh my god, what's happening to him? I'm having a heart attack! Ack, 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 ack. You ought to know by now! It's a tale as old as time. Man and woman fall in love, woman's wealthy parents don't approve, the lovers run off and get married in spite of them. Mr. Pewter Schmidt is the wealthy father of Lois Griffin, and he's never approved of her decision to be with Peter. He's also comically out of touch with the world leading him to make subtly racist and disrespectful remarks to most people he encounters. You look familiar. I was your gardener for 12 years. Oh, you look different without my lawn under you. I don't take the lawn with me when I go. Well, I was right to trust you with it then. Perhaps we all know a guy who's just similar enough to Carter that his character is especially well-liked by fans everywhere. His bouts of childishness also certainly help his case. Uh, sorry, what'd you say? I was texting Trisha. She just sent me a picture of her smoothie. Looks good, babe. Number five, death. What if the entity that carries out all terminations of earthly life were just a regular guy in a cool hooded cloak? You know, this looks awfully familiar. Wait a second, I remember this. That's me. Look at all that hair. <sighs> Can't believe I thought that looked good. I must have been high. In the Family Guy universe, this is the case, and that's how he manages to keep popping up in Quahog. For countless years, we've been faced with the uncertainty of death, and oftentimes, laughing at the void is the healthiest and most rational response. His casual demeanor and frequent brushes with central characters may in fact be the best example of catharsis throughout the series, and he's typically game for an irreverent joke or two as well. Ew, how did you do that? Oh, well, uh, let's just say when I was younger I uh, did some films I'm not particularly proud of. Number 4. Consuela. Okay, we're awful people for loving this one so much, but Consuela's over-the-top Hispanic housekeeper stereotype never seems to get old. She rarely manages to respond in the affirmative and will more than likely be little help if you need to get information from her. She's made appearances at Superman's Fortress of Solitude. Well, uh, can you just give him this flyer? I no, no. I have no money. And many Quahog households, not to mention Jabba the Hutt's palace. Me, Sir Jabba, no. When Consuela comes on screen, we're surely guaranteed a clean place, a safe kitten, and plenty of belly laughs that we feel slightly guilty about, if we're being honest. One, one, two, five. There you go, you got it. One, five, five. What? Number three, Bruce. You know what? I'm not going to need the V8, because I can just get some tomato juice at the Minimart down the street. It's a little more expensive, but that's okay. I like to help out a small business. Perhaps the most often quoted character throughout the series, this middle-aged man was merely known as the Oh No Guy for many years. So as you can imagine, Bruce never passes up an opportunity to express disbelief with his two favorite words. He also views the world in a slightly different way, leading to commentary that is equal parts extraneous and hilarious. Hey, everybody. Today's the big day. That's all, Your Honor. One thing's for certain. Bruce should try to avoid dramatic courtrooms, lest the Kool-Aid man inflict major property damage as a direct result of Bruce's rhetoric. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Number two. Tom Tucker. Just to put it out there, Tom Tucker is packing. I drive a 2006 Infinity and I don't intend to lose it. So come and get some, punks. Channel 5 News has been a core part of the series since its very beginning, constantly delivering the news to all of Kohan. While there are several standouts, such as the succinct Ali Williams, there's no doubt that the true star is Tom. 
From the start, his deadpan way of delivering headlines has helped jumpstart countless episodes. While other characters started out normal and then became chaotic, he's been like this since his debut. His inflated ego, despite his middling fame, has been the source of countless side-splitting moments. Oh my god, what happened? I fell through a trapdoor that led to an underground passageway. So I followed it and it led me to a hatch over there in the parlor. The same thing happened to me, but with a mustache. He's had several storylines centered around him, each one more wild than the last. With his constant dry comments during his newscasts, he's not only become the town's favorite reporter, he's become ours as well. Oh, it looks like things are getting very heated here. This is not a safe place to be. And now sports. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Mayor Adam West Hey, baby. Want some Adam West penis? This character is so inexplicable, we can't even begin to understand the reasons behind his ridiculous actions. His dialogue is so stupid that only a genius could write it. Mayor West also married one of his hands, nearly conjured up Beetlejuice, and enjoyed playing Ding Dong Ditch during his free time. It's my first house, I'm not very good at this. It makes you wonder how he found the time to actually be mayor of Quahog, and how the town wasn't on the brink of destruction from his absolute obliviousness to social norms. Hey, we've probably all encountered politicians worse than Mayor West, but none has come close to inducing his level of comedic gold. Oh, did we forget to mention, he was also voiced by the real Adam West. I can think of no greater tribute to their memories than this solid gold statue of Diggum, the Sugar Smacks Frog. What's your favorite moment from a Family Guy side character? Let us know in the comments below. Huh. Nobody's home. Nobody's home? Principal party! Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.